Today, we'll be exploring the fascinating world of IT Earth Systems, and I'll also be touching on the contrast to the MEN um, Earth System, which most people are familiar with because it's in uh, the houses day-to-day -day in Australia, um, and we'll talk about their significance, and especially their significance on marine vessels. Um, before we start, uh, it is an electrical presentation, so there are some electrical fundamentals to remember. Um, these are the two main ones. If people can remember these throughout the presentation, the concepts will be clear or clearer, hopefully. Um, the current always seeks to return to its source via the path of least resistance. Least resistance, this, this is the fundamental electrical principle. And then we've got Ohm's law, obviously. Um, and the one we're interested mainly today is this variation here in that um, you have a big number at the bottom being resistance gives you a lower current. So if you remember these, um, as we go through some of the circuit examples, hopefully um, things become clear. Uh, what is an ITO system? So IT, um, everyone will want to know, stands for isolated terror, which means that um, the system is isolated from ground. There is no connection between uh, the source and ground. Um, it's mainly used in um, systems or um, areas that need um, a priority with the operational plant, which is marine vessels. Um, and unlike a MEN system, uh, there is no earth neutral. So there is no earth utilized for a low impedance return path for fault currents. Clicking over, this is an MEN system. So this is what you would uh, find in your homes. Um, you probably wouldn't have a big motor, but uh, you um, have that earth neutral, which you can see here. Earth is connected to neutral. So in the event of an earth fault, um, this earth would be used as the low impedance path to carry um, the strong earth currents. Stepping through an IT system example, um, here we have a steering motor um, isolated from grounds, as you would find on a vessel. Um, normal operation, um, currents flowing, no problems would act like this. Um, then we have a, oh, sorry. Um, one thing to remember with IT systems that you can't see is this um, capacitive effect, okay? So there is um, current flowing while you can't see it, continually flowing through this um, capacitor and insulation resistance. It is very large resistance, unlike your cables in your system. So always there is a tiny current flowing through here, as you can see, very large resistance, very small current. If you remember this principle, the next slide, when we talk about having a earth fault, so we've now had an earth fault between uh, line three and earth showing here. So what is going to happen is you have a earth fault, traditionally a very low resistance value. However, because you have a very large uh, impedance value here, um, this adds to that. And then you'll have a very small current flowing here. Okay. And that being the um, low impedance pass is the plant and that will continue to operate as per normal. So that is the main advantage of an IT earthing system is that if you have an earth fault, uh, the system will continue to function. Moving on to the M, MEN system, um, it would look something like this, current flowing. Sometimes there might be current on the neutral depending on type of motor, if you have an earth fault, then you're going to have a very large current flowing 
to you, through your earth, back to your source, always going back. And in this example, what's going to happen is un shown in the circuit, the circuit break would open, your plant's going to stop. Okay. You're going to have a very, very large fault current in the killer amps. Um, and um, that's, that's the main difference. Uh, side by side, you can see isolated, uh, connected um, uh, IT systems during an earth fault uh, because of the high impedance we're talking between here and here um, will mean that the first earth fault will uh, be very low current here. It'll be very high current. Um, moving on to the marine examples. So as we can see, IT earth systems prioritize plant and that's why all these guys like and make you use it earth systems on their vessels because you can have an earth fault and your steering mode is not going to stop it's going to continue to run um which in harbor or you have one of these events um you want your plant to continue operating while there is an earth fault um now they will they will instruct you to use them, but then they'll also instruct you to use an earth monitoring system. So um, there are negatives to the IT earth system, which I'll go on to explain in the next slide. Um, so these uh, societies will say, if you use an IT earth system, you have to have a insulation monitoring system behind it. And the reason for that is uh, is this example. You can have one earth fault, um, but as soon as you have two earth faults on a different phase, then effectively you're having a short between phases, which is a incredibly high uh, fault current and a very, very low um, resistance value generating that. Um, and then your plant is going to trip. Normally you would have circuit protection, which I didn't draw in to simplify the circuit, but your circuit protection is going to trip. Um, so now we've learned about an ITL system. I'm now going to move on to the insulation monitoring devices that are out there that have to be employed um, to help um, monitor your earth faults to ensure that if you do have an earth fault, you know about it and you can rectify the earth fault before a second earth fault um, can occur. Um, the first uh, installation monitoring devices were simply three LED lamps. Um, I had to actually scroll the internet to find these. They're still used. However, they're not very sophisticated. Um, their principle is that they are constantly lit and if there's an earth fault um, they will diminish and the others will get brighter um, they're very cheap and simple to use the circuit works like this um, same circuit as we we're seeing before however you have three lights um, connected to each phase and um, all connected together and in this situation you are connecting something to to ground this would be the only situation you'd be doing that and they work in that they're all the same brightness um, if there's no earth fault if an earth fault does occur on line three in this example um, the lowest um, path of resistance is going to be this earth fault on line three so current will want to pass through here and not through l3 so l3 is not getting any current then it turns off that is the basic principle of um earth monitoring LEDs and you'll still see them on switchboards on vessels or any IT earth system. Um, then became um, installation monitoring relay devices and they are more sophisticated. These work by um, uh, introducing a, a small voltage onto uh, the um, phase of your system and they can actually measure that impedance value that we we're talking about and that is what is protecting um, the system from an earth fault uh, we can see it happening here so this is where they sit they're connected to both earth and um, the system 
and that generating a small frequency that can measure that impedance, which was shown here. No earth fault, the relay will say good. And these are often connected to platform management systems. So instead of the mandrolic lights where a uh, maintainer would be on rounds, continually looking at these lights, making sure they don't turn off, they're brighter, it's all a bit subjective. Um, this is measuring accurately the um, impedance of the system and then flagging yes or no if you um, go into alarm or have a loss of impedance. Um, so that would, when you have an earth fault, it's going to go into alarm. Um, they've now got even more sophisticated um, installation monitoring devices where um, in this case, you can have um, current transformers placed in your circuits, which will give you more specific um, fault finding information of where an earth fault has occurred. Um, in this example, you can see um, you have your earth um, monitoring device at the top, always after the, the transformer. And then down through the circuits, you can introduce um, what they call an EDS module, which is connecting to current transformers. And these transformers are picking up of um, <laughs> the capacitance value of that circuit. And if it is uh, deteriorating, then it will tell the master. So um, you always want to be looking for your um, earth faults. Uh, this is a better example of the system. So you can see here that the system um, is showing you have uh, 200 kilo ohms of impedance and you have an alarm value, a pre-alarm value of 40 k ohms and 10 k ohms. So if you had an earth fault on that system, this number is going to get smaller, okay? And if you get two, then it's going to get smaller again. Three, these are on the same phase, smaller again. What uh, a maintainer would be looking at is if this is dropping to say 40 kilo ohms, you should be then looking for where the earth fault is. An earth fault could be a um, breakdown in the insulation of a cable. It could be um, water's got in into something. It could be a cover on a motor that's displaced. It could be a number of these things. This device is going to tell you if um, uh, part of the phase has come in contact with earth via these numbers of resistance. Um, and you want to pick them up before a second earth fault occurs on another phase, because going back into my previous example, that's when you have a very dangerous condition and the plant will trip. Um, this is another type of um, insulation monitoring device. Um, the devices are only as good as if they are connected to a piece of equipment. So say if you have a motor that isn't running continuously, like a winch or a um, fire pump, bilge pump, these pumps could be sitting there, not run for months and months, and you'll have an air gap um, being your starter. So one of the deficiencies or one of the characteristics of earth monitoring systems is they can't see through an air gap. If, if you don't have continuity, you can't measure anything. Um, so this device um, is an offline monitoring device and sits after that starter and continually would look at this motor for a breakdown in insulation um, and then would be able to report on it. Um, so this is another type of insulation monitoring device that would only be used for uh, sort of equipment that is majority offline. Um, here is a case study. So in reality, you have a mixture of all of the devices. Big ships have very large distribution systems and you're required to have an insulation monitoring device after every distribution transformer. Um, and big ships can have... Um, four transformers um, connecting to six main switchboards. And they, depending on their redundancy, could have interconnectors. And you might end up having eight insulation monitoring devices on a vessel and then some offline devices, as you can see here, and then um, earth fault detecting devices 
further down the chain. And it's always going to be a mix depending on the, how big the vessel is, what the vessel does, if it's prone to earth folds, if there's water involved in more spaces, they're continually changing. Um, and this is an example of one. And then they're now all, all the modern ones are now connected to uh, the platform management system. So maintainers are continually getting updates on the condition of insulation of the vessel um, because all the devices can now talk to it, to one another on Ethernet bus or Modbus or depending on what, what you want to do. Um, summarizing, um, IT systems are used on vessels. Uh, MEN systems are also used on vessels but mainly in areas where distribution is for hotel services or um, things like GPOs for cabins. And then you're going to have a mix of both networks, which you can do. And it's always about um, isolation transformers and, and reintroducing that earth neutral link. Um, the critical platform equipment is always going to be on IT earth system um, for the obvious reason of that uh, protection that it gives you. Um, and the last point is regardless of either system, um, electrical systems degrade, especially on ships, the heat, seawater, um, the conditions that are in, um, the insulation will break down. It's not good forever. Nothing is good forever. So regular maintenance and monitoring and looking at these systems, testing Earths is all crucial to um, the um, integrity of the system. And if you just set and forget, um, the system's not going to save you completely. You always will have to have a level of, of maintenance and continuous monitoring. Um, shameless plug. Um, Osbright. Um, we're just, if people don't know us, we're um, uh, a group of uh, engineers and electricians focusing on electrical services across um, Australia on marine vessels. Um, if there's any problems anybody has, please feel free to reach out to us.